So today we have a very special guest uh, with us on our interview series, CA Dhruv Bakshi. Thank you, Dhruv, for uh, taking out time from your uh, busy schedule and uh, agreeing to interview. How are you doing? Thanks, same. Doing well, doing well as well as you can do in in lockdown. And right. I'm based in Bombay right now, so it's not like looking great. But mm. uh, doing well, working hard as much as you can. How's everything your end? I hope everything's fine. Right, it's it's perfectly fine my end, doing well. Uh, so again, thank you. Really appreciate for you know taking our time uh, from your schedule. Uh, so Dhruv, uh, uh, tell me something about yourself and uh, you know about your uh, current role in Namura. So yeah, so uh, currently I'm in the strategy team for investment banking for the Asia X Japan region. It's basically a uh, whole of Asia plus Australia, but minus Japan. We do the strategy for the investment bank as a whole for AEJ. Uh, and I work currently directly with the COO of Namura, who is based out of Hong Kong currently. Uh, I am based in Hawaii, in Mumbai, and, and we are considered as the offshore team. But my onshore primary manager is based in Hong Kong. So that's what I'm currently doing. Wow. So you switch uh, regularly between Hong Kong and India? Well, that's interesting. I, I wouldn't say I switch regularly, but I do uh, have constant touch with my manager in Hong Kong. And considering the Mura is based out of the, the Asia headquarters is based out of Hong Kong, I do need to travel up and down at some point in time. And I was fortunate enough to have four months in. 2019 based in Hong Kong, which I would say was like a really delightful experience. Right, right, right. So Dhruv, I think it's pretty interesting the kind of role you are in. It's very niche. It's really, yeah. really like something which I've, I didn't know about before. Uh, so I want to take you back a little bit, you know, to those experiences which you had before you joined Namura, about your schooling, your CA preparation. Can you talk about that? Can you touch on that? Sure. Uh, so my schooling and my college and in Bombay, there's something called junior college as well. Uh, that's all been in Bombay. Uh, I was in a, in, a, in a Christian school, all boys school. And then I went on to do junior college and my degree college from the same place is a college called Jehind in Bombay. And one of the things which I would you know, like to mention is that being part of Mumbai University, it's not very competitive or intensive course, uh, regardless of what stream you do take. So at that point, you know, I did decide to do a professional degree. It has to supplement your existing college degree because it's not very competitive. So that's when around the 11th or 12th standard, you decide what options you have as a professional to, uh, to pick up which, which degree you want to take up. So chartered accountancy or lawyer were the top runners. And I decided to do chartered accountancy. My father was CA. My brother was also doing CA at the time. So it yeah. seemed like the natural choice. Uh, so I started doing uh, chartered accountancy and for the first few years, it's fine. And then it really ramps up as anyone doing CA knows. And I was fortunate enough to start to do my article ship from KPMG. I started my article ship in 2012 and I was actually there for about five years till 2017. I did three years of my article ship all at KPMG. I was in the corporate tax department. I was handling DMT clients, especially and especially the banking sector clients which mm -hmm. actually led me to, to having an interest in what banks do. But also apart from that, I would just like to touch upon how my, maybe my experience was in KPMG. Uh, and uh, I think for the basis of this, this interview would be very, you know, something which really honed my professional skills and really was uh, integral to my professional development. And that was my article chip period. I think, a lot of people do not get that sort of training, that sort of intensive training as part of the curriculum, especially in courses like in, in Mumbai, in the Mumbai University. You're not right. forced to do an internship. It's maybe about choice. But as a child accountant, you are forced to do uh, an article shifting and for good reason. Uh, and also working in a big four company like KPMG, I, ha I, was, exp I was exposed to you know, a corporate culture. I was exposed to you know, really improving on my communication skills on how to be formal at times versus how to be colloquial at times. My email writing skills is something which no one teaches you. I was given that training. And apart from the basic skills required to do well in corporate taxation, uh, KPMG does give you a holistic training to really develop you as a professional. 
And I would say that is something which really helped me grow as a, a professional in the corporate world. Uh, apart from that, uh, I qualified with, in my child accountancy in the first term, luckily in 2014. In November yeah. 14, I cleared. So that was that, you know, pushes you to again, you, your responsibilities in KPMG changes. You, you know, are handling more important things, you're interacting with the client. And I was in KPMG for another two years as senior executive. So once you clear article ship, you're now looked at very differently. It's not only, okay, you're not an article now, you're a full qualified CA. So that pushed me into having more responsibility, more role, more meteor roles in KPMG. But I, I was still continuing in the TMT sector. And uh, uh, yeah, so that was being my background. Uh, college on the college uh, front, uh, anyone I would say in a, no, in, a, in a Mumbai university would need to do something apart from just that, just that Mumbai university degree because there is a need to learn some skills which to make you employable, to make you differentiate you from the crowd. And that is something which I would you know, just mention from my personal experience mm -hmm. that I don't think the Mumbai university equips you with what's required. Right. So you need to do something more apart from uh, just uh, continuing with the education because that's how I think it's structured in our uh, country. So that's pretty... Yeah, I would agree. I would say that that, that was something which uh, really stands out. You know, you, you don't see the, the big companies coming to, you know, college campuses and not, and not giving you the meaty roles, you know. Right, so right, right. that is something which I felt was uh, quite... Uh, a distinguishing factor between say something like Delhi University versus Mumbai University. You don't have these big companies coming. You have companies which are decent, but they're not, you know, you want to aim for the top, right? You don't want yep. to, uh, you know, you want to shoot for the stars. You don't want to shoot for the trees. Got it. Got it. Works yeah. well. I'm sure like that really helped you doing pursuing an article ship. Did that help you break into banking or was it more to it than, uh, than just the education and the professional degree. How, was, how did it go for you? Okay, so personally, uh, I think after being in corporate tax for five years, uh, I kind of, you kind of get, you kind of know what you don't want to do. And uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't say I knew what I wanted to do at that point, but I, I did know that I didn't want to continue in corporate taxation. And I took the decision to leave KPMG after being there for five years. And one of the things which, uh, which I wanted to do was, you know, explore what are the options available because you, once, because when you're a child accountant, your sole focus is to become a CA and then it's, you know, you're working hard all the day, all the time. You're not really exposed to different areas. So one of the things which I wanted to do, which I seemed different from being a big organization was, you know, what, how does a startup work? You know, how does it feel to be in a startup, you know, in that dynamic environment? Right. So after, after KPMG, I joined a, an Ayurvedic startup for a short period of time. It was called Kapiva. And I was yeah. there in a very dynamic role. I was sort of, uh, the title was operations manager, but I was handling everything from the day-to-day -day operations. I was in charge of getting the team online from a brick and mortar uh, sales strategy to moving online to Amazon, which takes a lot of, uh, you know, there are a lot of ticks mm -hmm. and checks you have to do. And even to an extent where I was handling sometimes customer complaint calls, where they would call for something and I would pick up the phone and be like, yes, you know, we okay. can do this for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was a very, you know, out of the box uh, situation. I, I've never experienced it. It was fun. It was dynamic. But I also did realize that, you know, I was more suited towards a structured role and, you know, which comes from being in a slightly big, big corporation. And that's when I started reaching out to my, my network. And obviously as a, as a, as a young person, as maybe 20, 23, 24, you don't really have a very large professional network. You know, you, you have your immediate seniors, but you haven't really, spread your wings yet so a lot of the indian you know uh, job market works on is like your personal network which would be maybe your father or your father's friends or your you know your friend's father who would be in the professional world so i did reach out to you know some friends of mine uh you know i would reach out to their fathers who've been in as, as a professional and i did tell them like listen hey i'm a child accountant qualified i have kpmg as a big name on my cv uh, yes, the, the uh, experience was only corporate tax, but I've, I've been exposed to, you know, other aspects of the finance world while working there. So, you know, I, I'm open to working in an investment bank, a PE firm, VC, you know, whatever the opportunity comes along. 
So through this personal network is actually when I got a few interviews here and there. Uh, I interviewed for a VC. I interviewed for an asset management company. I interviewed for even something called e funding, e crowd funding, uh, a venture, and yeah. uh, I also venture. Actually, I also did a corporate strategy team role in Ernst and Young. I did interview there, okay. and all the responses were were positive. Uh, but it just seemed that you know you it wasn't exactly what you're looking for. Each each job description uh, was different. And you know it didn't really spike that interest in in me, and I, I really didn't want to go back to a situation where you're you know you're in KPMG and and yes it's a big name but you're still not looking at what you want to do. Uh, and actually after all this is when I got in touch with Namura uh, through for the strategy role in investment banking, and that was very interesting. It it wasn't investment banking out and out, which is basically I don't do models, I don't do pitch books, but it was strategy for an investment bank. Which which seemed uh, something which I could really you know do well at, and I had uh, I had six six interview rounds with Namura. I was I had three rounds with my team in Hong Kong, and right. you know after all this intensive uh, wow. interview uh, prep, I converted the role in 2018. So okay. it's been almost two years now uh, in the firm. Wow, this seems like quite a hustle. Uh, so. Uh, going on the same lines i want to touch upon uh, that since a lot of people have a perception you know watching movies like no wolf of yeah. wall street that how investment yeah. banking looks like from the outside mm-hmm. so uh, does it really uh, so since you are an insider maybe you can give us a perspective into you know does is is that how investment banking looks like fancy glamorous parties or there's more to it which people don't see until they get into an investment bank absolutely i think uh, what what the field in general uh, maybe is is very different uh, i can talk about a little bit of the corporate culture i i saw in kpmg was the corporate culture in namura so in a kpmg you're an organization which is about maybe 8000 people in mumbai office itself you have right. such a large network a number of people large number of people at your level as well so you know the terms of celebration of a deal would not be on a scale in which it would be in an investment bank you do have appreciation from your 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 seniors in kpmg they do want to have you know your team building networks you do have your offsites but it's obviously very different because you're coming from 8000 people versus an investment bank where the teams are very lean you know i think one of the perceptions is that oh in an investment bank you tend to work much longer but the right. thing is that it's just a, a factor of the teams being much leaner you know it it's it's only five designations till the top you you know as you are aware it's you know it's just you start off one place and then, oh it's only five places till the top but in those each designation it's a lot of time spent so yes it's it is uh, they do the, the culture of celebrating our employees is there across all organizations and you know it's it's very important to have a, a junior member or anyone in the team to feel like hey my efforts have been recognized but yes a little bit skewed towards the movies because because the team is so small it is possible for them to you know take personal interest in you and to take you out and have a good time uh and i one of my experiences was in hong kong where you know a new batch of junior analysts had just joined right and the md took us out and it was a good 40 people and it was it was a great experience they took us out for an experience which for me was unique it was a, a hot pot dinner and yes there was alcohol it was flowing and after all the dinner and the food and the drinks we went to to karaoke you know in a in a fancy room where you again had drinks flowing and again everyone mm-hmm. singing it didn't really feel like you're you know there's an md in your room there's a vp in the room right. a bunch of analysts we're all singing we're singing english songs we're singing chinese songs so it was quite interesting and this is something which i didn't experience in kpmg in kpmg obviously it's a little more sober down uh you would have you know vegetarian dinners because majority were vegetarians uh, gujarati chart accountants in bombay right so it was very different right but yes it it is it does involve a little bit different corporate culture but i think it's mostly skewed towards because the teams are so lean you can have a little you know little fancy celebration but definitely not wolf of wall street it it, it is you know much less <laughs> and uh, uh i mean wolf of wall street is amazing and i wish maybe i get to join that kind of bank too, but, uh, <laughs> right 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 not not, not currently not currently in this in in, in any bank i know
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that gives a pretty yeah. realistic pers- like perception about you know how yeah. actually things work out as compared to what's shown mm-hmm. in the movie, which is more glamorized yeah. version of how I guess you know things actually work out. Well, uh, that That's was true. a pretty good insight, dude. So I want you to actually touch upon one of your best experiences and one of your worst experiences in a bank. You. Yeah. So I think, like I mentioned earlier, like one of the questions people ask is that you know has the number of hours increased in an investment bank? You know, right? And I feel the answer to that question is that everyone in any job works hard. There's no, uh, no particular job where you're paid well and you work less. That's is that's absolutely impossible. So yes, uh, I think in KPMG I was working hard as well. I was working hard here, and but just you know, to highlight maybe a period in time when it was extremely stressful uh, was actually when my team. We were a four-member team, and then we became two members. One of the one of the my associates left when another person got transferred to another team. So the amount of work for four people was, you know, was forced upon two people. And at that point in time, you can imagine just your workload just shot through the roof. It was wow. a daily twelve to fourteen-hour days, wow. and uh, it was just very stressful to handle. You know, a, a, a senior person's role. The person who left was my senior, and I was definitely punching above my weight. And I was definitely at a at a loss of how to do things. It wasn't that I knew how to do things. It was everything was new to me. Uh, but I did have a great manager who gave me, you know, the space to to understand it, to work in my own time, to figure things out, and also at, at the same point keeping a level of uh, output required for whatever task I was given. So that was a really stressful time. So maybe an additional two three hours a day went into just trying to figure out things and how to do it. So a, a usual 10 hour, 11 hour day became easily 14 hours. And that was one of the most stressful periods for me. But right. actually that did lead to, I would say, one of my best periods as well. Because, because I was current, because we work offshore and the fact that the team became so lean, they asked me to come to Hong Kong for about eight weeks. And being in Hong Kong and working, you know, absolutely uh, closely with the senior management and the senior stakeholders who we do interact with, it really, again, fast-tracked my development and my personal development and my professional development in Namura. And that really bore fruit in, you know, in me getting advancement in my position, in me being able to experience things which I probably wouldn't have experienced. For example, I would not have probably got to, do, to work on certain strategies as, a, as an analyst. But since my associate had left, I got the responsibility and I was given the opportunity to show what I could do, what my inputs would be, and they were well recognized. So yin to yang, there's always a positive to every negative. But yeah, that was a, that was a pretty intensive, uh, intensive period in, in Nibura for me. And it was a good three, three months of you know, uh, intensive work on a daily basis. Right, that sounds pretty intense, bro. So in between this uh, really insane work, uh, work schedule, do you take out time for yourself? Do you have any hobbies? Do you indulge in any kind of uh, things apart from work? I think uh, one of the things which I learned in Namura is that uh, people are not only defined by their role. Uh, you see a lot of people with really active interests. I think one of you, uh, I was you know, really inspired by you actually. You're a you know, national level squash player who's now working in a bank. So in KPMG, actually, I saw a lot of people would just focus on work. And I think that's a that's a... Uh, outcome of being a chartered accountant where you're so focused on just being a chartered accountant right. that you know you do put f- everything on the back foot uh, but having said that yes I do have interest I, I'm pretty active I uh, play a ton of sports I have a Sunday scheduled football game I really am active on the cult fitness uh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I used right. to go to the gym I used to make it a point that you know I should take one hour out a day go to the gym you know exercise get that dopamine flowing and Nine times out of ten, I used to get back to work around nine mm-hmm. o'clock. But I used to try to achieve at least go to the gym, you know, stay fit, stay active, and try to meet friends on the weekend. But yeah, definitely not be defined only by work, even though there's always work to do. Right, 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 right. I think you already got a lot of good insights from you in such a short time, and uh, mm-hmm. I know you're a very busy guy, uh, and I won't take your mood, uh, your your like. The remaining time so i just like to uh end this interview with one last question so sure what is this advice me one advice you would like to give your younger self uh mm-hmm. and to a lot of people who are watching this right now you know 
when you were yeah. uh, when you were in a college or during your CCA preparation, what is the advice you give to yourself mm-hmm. to break into uh, finance in general and banking in particular? Okay. Okay. Um. So I think uh one of the things which uh I think everyone kind of knows is that you do require certain skills, technical skills, to join the banking sector. You cannot just, uh, regardless of your capability, you do need certain uh, training and technical development to join banking. And right. when I was looking for a role, a lot of a lot of people said, "Hey, you're just a chartered accountant," and a chartered accountant outside the chartered accountancy world is not really much. It just counts as okay, fine. Your chartered accountant means you're capable, but that doesn't mean you have the technical skills. Okay. So for banking, yeah. for for banking, for for uh, specifically for banking, an MBA or a CFA degree really on paper will show that yes, I do have the skills, the technical skills uh, in my pocket, and then it becomes then it just becomes uh, you know how you do well in your interviews. Can you carry yourself? What are your, what are your soft skills? So one of the things which I tell uh, I tell anyone is that you know as much as people focus on soft skills, that is the assumption that you do have the technical skills already. So you might be the best speaker, you might be the most eloquent speaker, but if you don't have the technical skills, a lot of doors don't open. So that is a challenge which I face, and uh, while looking for a role outside of a CA. So one of the things I would tell maybe my younger self would be like, if at all you want to move, do have the education qualifications in the back in in your pocket. A college degree is not enough because it doesn't differentiate you from the crowd. So if at all CA degree, great, but if you want to move outside CA. Think of something which you can do, which, which makes you, which gives you the technical skills uh, to do that job. So for banking, it would be an MBA or a CFA. So that was one. The second thing which I felt was, uh, you know, at the time of doing article ship, you're doing, you're studying for CA plus you're working a full time job, and you really, you know, you curse yourself a little bit, saying that you know my friends are not, you know, my non CA friends are, are not working so hard. Why am I going through this? But Five years down the line, you will see a big difference between your professional development versus a person who's not done three years of articleship or you know who's interned somewhere. So one of the things which I would say to the general population, which is not uh, following CA, is do an internship for a slightly extended period of time for at least a month. You know, get that experience of corporate culture. It's very different from a classroom. You might be you know, the top five student in your class, but that does not convert to being good at your job. So that is something which just getting a taste of office life, getting a taste on how to formulate emails, how to interact with a senior, you know, when say you want a day off, how do you ask for a day off? You know, it just doesn't come. You're not submitting a letter to your teacher or your principal. How does that work? And that something comes with either working or interning somewhere. So that is something I would say to my younger self is that, you know, just appreciate the process you're going through right now, it will really help you in the long run. And uh, so that was what I would tell my younger self. And and lastly, uh, just being in investment banking, and since you asked me that question earlier, I would say like everyone should manage expectations in, in terms of what you want to do. And I, I don't like to be a buzzkill, but you know, uh, it's not all fairies and rainbows. Uh, once you come into investment banking, it's not going to be popping champagne. It's not going to be able to Wall Street. You are going to be joining as a junior, so there will be that certain amount of grunt work which you're doing. You know, you're just doing, you know, research, or you're updating graphs, or you're just making pitch books. You're not shaking hands with the client every day. But what will eventually uh, do good for you is that maybe something which works for you. So, for example, for me, I think getting encouragement from my seniors is something which really motivates me to do well. You know, so you put your heart and soul into say a, a presentation you made. And you you get appreciation from your seniors. That was what motivates me. And it's not necessarily you know that handshaking, that one billion dollar deal, which uh, which you just you know that's like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So there is this one saying which is that you don't have to love your job, but you don't have to hate it. So you know you can go in with you know just just manage your expectations, and you know you might find some things which really give you that kick, and it, it might not just be like you know. Banking, or it might not just be okay. Fine, killing it at a tax accountant. It can be something small. It can be something more day to day, and and yeah, just manage your expectations on what you what you will get every day. So yeah, right. that's something which I would tell anyone and my younger self. Wow, well said, Drew. Uh, thank you so much Thanks. for the interview. Thank you. Thanks, man. It's been really cool. Very fun.